Hi everybody. Uh, this my name is Scuba Dave, and this is another session of Scuba Talk. On this session, I'd like to talk to to you about the uh, nitrox or enriched air uh, that's out there. Different programs that you can sign up and get certified for. Uh, Patty offers a nitrox class or an enriched air class uh, that you can take. Uh, it will go anywhere from uh, 0 to or 21 percent to 40 percent uh, of enriched air or nitrox. A couple of the myths uh, I always like to dispel. Um, when I teach I have students that always come up to me and they'll say um, so if I do enriched air uh, that means I get to stay under the water longer. Uh, no, uh, that doesn't. Or they'll ask me, well, that means I get to go deeper. No, that doesn't either. Uh, those are myths or misunderstandings. Nitrox or enriched air, all that does is it does not allow the nitrogen buildup that we normally get off of the air. Uh, regular air is tw uh, 21% oxygen, or 21% oxygen, 79% uh, nitrogen. So when you go out and you do a dive, um, say you go to 80 feet, and, and I'm just kind of making this up as we go, and, and you dive for you know about 40, 45 minutes, something like that. Uh, when you come back, uh, normally you might feel a little fatigued because of all the nitrogen buildup. Then you have to sit out, uh, and I, I don't have my, my open water uh, slates with me, but normally everybody sits out of the water for about an hour uh, to help get rid of some of that nitrogen buildup in your body. So then when you go back uh, to do your second dive, say you're going to go back and do a 60 foot dive uh, for only 30 minutes, okay? Um, you, you're able to do those dives because you sat out for an hour. You allowed that excess nit uh, nitrogen to escape your body. Let, let's talk about the nitrogen buildup for just a second. Um, when we're under the water, right, and our body's being compressed, the nitrogen does not get to leave our body uh, as fast as it would here on the surface, okay, because it leaves through our pores and our skin. So they came up with enriched air, okay, which is more oxygen in the tank, okay. You can go up to 40%. Common, uh, most common uh, mixes are like 32% oxygen or 36% oxygen. Those are pretty much uh, the commons. However, depending on the dive and where you're going to go, uh, how long you're going to stay under the water, enriched air can limit you to how deep you're going to go depending on the percentage of enriched oxygen that's, that's in your tank. Okay. As far as the length of dive, um, you're not going to get any more dive time. Uh, you know, an 80 cubic foot cylinder filled, uh, you know, to say 3,000 psi. Whether it's filled with standard air or with enriched air, it's still 80 cubic feet at 3,000 psi. So your breathing habit is your breathing habit. You're, you're not, it's not going to change that. Okay? Um, and depending on your mix of, of enriched air, say you're running a 36% uh, percent, uh, enriched air, you're definitely not going to go down to 130 feet. Uh, just off the top of my head, I think a 36% uh, percent mix is going to limit you to maybe 110 feet or 100 feet. So those are considerations you need to think about when you're getting your tank filled. I normally run, uh, I try to run uh, around a 32% mix, um, but I, I only use nitrox when I go on vacation. Uh, because after a couple dives on enriched air, and, and you've been diving, when you get done with those dives, it's time to go, go take a nap. Uh, at least that's for me. Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm ready to go take a nap. Whether I, I lay in my lawn chair at the dive site and snooze for a little bit, or uh, I, you know, pack up, go home, clean my gear, and then when I get home, I lay on the couch and, and take a, uh, a, a, a snooze. 
But the last thing you want to do is here you are, you're on vacation. You're at your, your vacation destination, whether it be Cancun, whether it be uh, 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 I can't even, Hawaii, uh, you know, Barbados, Tahiti, uh, you know, wherever you're at, at your dive location. The last thing you want to do is go and sleep. Uh, you're there on vacation to relax, obviously, but you did your dives that day, and now maybe you want to go and, and have a beer at the local uh, dance place or go do some dancing with, with your wife or girlfriend or whatever. Uh, maybe you want a little bit of nightlife. You want to go watch a luau or participate in a luau. Uh, so you don't want to be so tired. Uh, you want to be able to enjoy a little bit of uh, nightlife. Um, so that's where, for me, the nitrox comes in because after a couple dives, I don't have all that, that fatigue because I don't have all that nitrogen buildup. So, um, along with that, along with, with understanding that, okay, now we, we have to start getting into what, what's involved, okay? Um, at first, you definitely want to go and, and visit your dive shop, uh, contact your instructor, uh, and tell them, hey, you know, uh, I think I'm interested in nitrox. You must already be an open water certified diver uh, to take the nitrox class. Um, so, so you've already got a little bit of diving under your belt, okay? Um, so along with that comes the responsibility of monitoring your tank. When you take it, your tank, and you tell uh, the person who's filling it, I want 32% or I want 36% uh, or whatever mix you want, okay, to fit your diving. Okay, they're going to fill it. Uh, they never can get it exactly unless they completely empty the tank. So if you had a little bit of air already in your tank and then they fill it with 32, just remember it might come out at 31, it might come out at 30. Okay, so if you want a full on uh, 32, 36, 29, whatever you want, they have to completely empty that tank and mix it. Now, when nitrox first came around, they used to always have to blend it. So they would have to empty the tank. They would have to, what they call, O2 clean the tank. Okay. And then they, they would start blending the, the mix. Now, you're going to go to quite a few dive shops, and they already have it blended. It's already made, in the term they use, it's called banked. So they have cylinders already filled, and so they just pump it into your tank. So... If you have, say, 300 PSI left in your tank and you tell them, you know, get me close to 36, uh, they're just going to take their 36, pump it in. You might walk out with about 35, maybe 34. And if that works for you, so be it. If not, you just need to tell them, no, uh, I need to, uh, I, want, I want a full 36. They'll drain the tank and then they'll fill it, okay? Get you, get you to 36, okay? So... A couple things that you need to know, a couple tools that you need, okay? When you take the class, they're going to teach you how to figure out your partial pressure. Plus, you'll get a couple slates uh, for 32 and uh, 36 mix that you could chart, just like we did for the open water, um, okay? Where you, you would find, okay, I'm going to go to 50 feet. I want to stay down, you know, 45 minutes. What kind of diver am I? Oh, I'm a... I'm a G diver or I'm an F diver. Okay, those couple of those uh, slates come with your class, come with the packet that you're going to have to purchase, so you can figure those out. Okay, but the easiest way, and it's now becoming the most common way because dive computers have progressed since I started diving. When I started diving, all we had was was uh, gauges. Okay, we didn't have a dive computer. We had a gauge that would tell you how deep you are, and then we had another gauge that would tell you how much oxygen or air you had left. Okay, and that's how we dove. Well, now, uh, probably in the last 15, uh, I'm going to say close to 20 years now, we've had dive computers. Okay, and a lot of these dive computers uh, are are nitrox compatible. When you go to purchase a, a new uh, dive computer if you're in the market you're gonna buy a new one 
just double check it. Make sure that it is uh, nitrox or enriched air. Okay, if it does, and it's really easy uh, because there's there, you just plug in the setting. It'll ask you uh, what uh, percentage you're you're going to use. You put in the percentage. It calculates everything for you. Okay, it's a no-brainer. You don't have to think. Okay, but prior to this part, when you get your tank back from whoever is filling it for you. They've, they're gauging it because they have to put a special sticker on that tank. And it tells you what the percentage is inside that tank. Okay? I always encourage you to double check it. Now, there's a, a thing that you need. I would have. Um, you can certainly borrow it from the dive shop uh, to check your your air while you're standing there but here's the deal say you're on a dive boat you only took one tank and you knew your first dive you wanted on nitrox okay so here you are you go in boom you do your first dive great dive you come back out you're so pumped but you still had 500 psi of say 36 percent nitrox in that tank okay the boat Say the boat doesn't provide nitrox. I've been on many boats that do not provide nitrox. Okay, so now you're on that boat, and they're going to fill it with air. You have no idea what percentage your nitrox cylinder is at this point, because they just put if you had 500, they just put 2,500 psi of air, 21 percent in there, but you had 36 of 500. Okay, what do you do? Hopefully. On the boat, they have the nitrox analyzer, and that's what this is. I don't know if you can see it very well, but this is called a nitrox analyzer. Okay, what I do is you take this. I have two setups that I can use. I can hook this black little piece here. I don't know how well you can see it. Okay, I'm holding it by a little stem right there. I put that in. Okay, then this is my regulator that's going to be on my tank. I take my BC inflate hose and I put this tube in. Uh, this tube costs, I don't know, uh, I think I paid like 20 bucks for it. Um, I'm sure if you can find that fitting, you can make your own tube, uh, whatever you want to do. But uh, this is my setup and the way I like to do it um, and I feel uh, my opinion only that I feel it's it's probably going to give you the best answer the best result through this thing and so you just take it you plug that in to your inflate deflate okay this is still hooked the regulator is still hooked to your tank okay and then with this piece in my my analyzer I plug the tube onto it, and then I can open the valve on the tank, and my analyzer will read it. And I don't waste only what goes into this hose and tube. That's the only thing I waste as far as what's in my tank. Okay, so enriched air or nitrox, as you're going to find out, uh, depending on where you're at, where you live, normally uh, an air fill uh, around uh, Southern California here. It's normally around eight to ten dollars an air fill, unless you you buy a, an air fill card uh, that most dive shops will sell you. You'll get the price down probably to around five six dollars a fill. So you save a couple dollars every fill. Okay. Um, so, but nitrox is uh, it goes by the foot, and that's how they sell it to you. Okay. And so, if you have 120 cubic feet, okay, and say it's $1.50 a foot, okay, that can get pretty expensive, okay. Or if you have a 100 cubic foot tank, $1.50, okay, that, that gets, gets real expensive. Um, I'm not quite sure uh, what it is uh, here. I really haven't uh, paid for it here. I know when I go on vacation... I normally pay anywhere from twelve to sixteen dollars a tank when I use enriched air or nitrox. 
So you can see already, I just went from $8 an air fill with air, almost doubled the price, okay, to dive nitrox. That's why I personally really only use it when I'm uh, diving uh, on vacation, okay. So I showed you how to do it this way. Okay, another way you can do it is I bought the attachment that actually comes with the analyzer. It's a uh, little green tip. I don't know how well you can see that. Okay, and it's got a little teeny hole here in the end. Okay, I'm going to take this off. I put tape over it when I'm not using it. It kind of helps the sensor and, and everything in there. But you can take the tip and you push it in like that and that's in there okay and then you've got to turn it on okay and I turned it on and now I'm just letting it calibrate to zero okay so now that it's there okay so I have my bottles that I use these are my bottles that I use strictly for teaching uh, and I have a marked at what percentage they are uh, so this one this one is marked at 32 percent so you would take it you would take your analyzer and you would turn this on to where it's just barely coming out okay uh, if it comes out too much you're gonna blow the sensor okay in, in your, your reader so you want it to where it just barely coming out and then you read your number, okay, I'm, I'm at zeros, I can hold that up like that, and I stick it there, and I watch it, and there's the numbers going, 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 okay, I'm at 31.9 is what, what this, this just read, 31.9, okay, so 31%, uh, 31.9% uh, enriched air is what's in here okay uh, let me turn it back off there we go I must have had it going because I could hear it barely leaking out of there um, so I would set my dive computer for 32 even though it's 31.9 uh, you can't get that close on the computer it goes by the whole numbers 31 32 33 so I would set that set it at 32 okay um, always over instead of lesser Okay, be safe, be smart. Okay, so that's what this one is. Okay, and like I said, the other way uh, I showed you, I'll turn this on. Okay, I'm pull the sensor out. Okay, the other way is I'm going to do it this way to kind of show you how I do it. Put that one in. Okay, I'm going to let the sensor clear itself out and get back. And then I will calibrate it. Now this bottle, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, it's at actually 26%. Okay. So what I would do is say this is my big dive tank. Okay. Okay. This is my dive tank. Trying not to knock this off the table. If it falls, it's pretty much toast. These are about $200. Um, unless you go to a, a dive show, then you can pick them up a lot cheaper. That's where I recommend you buying them. Just go, go to a dive show. Uh, you can pick them up there. Let's see if I can get this on now. Hey, there we go. Screw this in like that okay so now I got my BC and everything here okay oh I need to analyze this I'm gonna take my analyzer pop it in there okay yeah this is already turned back off so I'm gonna turn it back on 
There we go. Okay, this is at zero already. Now I'm just going to barely open this. Okay. There it is. Okay, turn that off. And, and I'm right at 26 is what this came up. So 26%. Okay, to me this is the easiest way. Especially if you're on a dive boat uh, or something like that, where you already have this all hooked up, uh, you just slap it on, boom, I'm done. Okay, so and it, to me, this way it gives you a more accurate reading than trying to hold it to the bottle opening uh, where, where it's all leaking around it or taking a chance turning it on too, too full. Boom, now you're going to blow something or you can blow something if you're not careful. Okay, so just a couple tips there. Uh, things things you might want to want to look at um, setup you know if you like the way I do my setup uh, something you might want to think about uh, I certainly like it this way um, I know other people seem to like it uh, that way too uh, once I showed them my setup and you can buy all this if you go to uh, Dima or somewhere Dima seems to always be the best prices uh, you know the vendors are trying to show off new stuff plus they, they want to make money okay um, while they're there okay so couple couple ways I've showed you on how to read your bottle and and get set up okay the nitrox analyzer they also have one uh, that's out there that that's uh, for uh, the CO2 uh, analyzer you can buy if you want to check the CO2 in your tank. Um, I really don't sweat that part of it. Um, and that would be like another $200 if you did. Um, so just food for thought, things to think about. I always keep it here in this case. You can buy this little Pelican case. It's the 1050 I use. Uh, seems to be just the perfect size keeps it nice clean protects it uh, in case something falls or, or damages it we're good to go okay so that's pretty much on on how you want to analyze um, what you're gonna what you've been seeing behind me is some of the charts uh, that we talked about earlier in the show uh, about you know charting yourself uh, I would look up on how to uh, uh, find uh, your 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 uh, your uh, PO2 setting, so you know it. We never want to go beyond a 1.4. Okay, um, so always keep that in mind. Uh, check the internet. Uh, maybe in a later class, I'll go over on how to do the physics, how to determine what your PO2 setting is. But certainly with your dive computer. Once you put in the mix, it's going to give you all your settings, all your PO2s. This one here, this is my dive computer. It's called the Wisdom 3. It's made by Sherwood. Uh, that's the one I use. Uh, I've been using it for at least five, six years now. Uh, I also own the Wisdom 2. Kind of shows you I, I really like the Sherwood uh, program. I like the algorithms in it. Uh, I like how you can set your own algorithm. It comes with three different variables. Uh, you can set it to standard or conservative and then very conservative. I always set mine to the very conservative. Uh, you know, I, I just don't want to get into any decompression or anything like that. I still have fun with all, all my dives and uh, I follow dive rules. However, a couple years ago, uh, uh, Aqualung uh, had stopped carrying the Sunto uh, brand and they went to their own brand. And this is one that I bought from Aqualung. It's their basic wrist mount model. Uh, I use this as my backup. Uh, as you can see, my wrists are not that small, but I just put it on the hose uh, that goes through here, locks onto here. So if anything should happen to my main computer, I do have a backup. This is also Nitrox compatible. Okay, so when I set them, I set them both uh, for whatever my Nitrox level is. 
and so if one should fail on me, I have a backup. I'm good to go. I always uh, I always uh, recommend uh, that you take a, a backup uh, computer with you. Um, you just never know. And uh, I, I did have one uh, dive computer go bad on me when I was under the water, and when I came to the surface, I was done diving for the day. Unfortunately, I was teaching a class that day, um, but still, nonetheless, I was done that day, and we were we were scheduled to do one more dive uh, that we, we had to abort, we couldn't do. Um, I wasn't able to get the battery replacement in my dive computer. If your computer should die on you uh, while you're in the middle of the dive, you definitely want to surface, kick in, and then if you can get the battery replaced fast enough, you have to look at the manual. The manual will tell you how many... Uh, minutes or seconds you have in between swapping the batteries uh, to keep the residual memory. Uh, the residual memory uh, is very important, especially if you just did a dive. Okay, now you want to change that. If you take too long in changing it, this will start as if you hadn't dove at all that day. So now you're going to get false information and you're putting yourself at risk. So either do what I did, don't do the second dive. Now I've got to go replace the battery. And I'm gonna I'm gonna wait till the next day to go diving. Or uh, if you're quick enough, you can get it placed. You keep the residual memory, and you'd be okay to go. Okay. Um, I'm not a big fan of following my buddy's computer. Everybody says, well, you know, you both just did the exact same dive. Well, that's not true. Uh, if he dropped, say say, well, here are one of our biggest dives is La Jolla Shores. There's a big canyon that we all like to go into. Canyon starts at about 55 feet. So if you go down and say I stopped at 60 feet, but he dropped below me to 65 feet or maybe even 70 feet, his algorithm is totally different than mine. Okay, just those few feet can really change or make a difference. Okay, can determine whether or not you're going to go decompression dive. Okay, you just went from a recreational dive to a decompression dive. So be smart, be safe. Um, I hope this video is helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please email me at bubbleblowers, uh, uh, bubbleblowers94 uh, at gmail.com. I'll be more than happy to try to answer with you. If you live in the San Diego area, send me an email if you're interested in taking a, a NITRUST class, uh, and, and we'll get together and we'll see what we can do for you. And for now, this is Scuba Dave saying I hope you have a great dive. Talk to you soon.